You've seen maps of the world dozens and dozens of times, haven't you? And they look something like this. There are the continents, great masses of land standing there and separated by enormous oceans, and the continents standing perfectly still. Or are they? No, geologists say they're moving very, very slowly, but moving apart from one another. Drifting apart over millions of years until we get them in the positions that we now know. Continental drift. Well, you can imagine that if the Earth consists of great plates of rock moving over one another like that, there must be enormous pressures, enormous forces existing in the Earth's surface, and there are. You can make a model of it like this. Start with three colours of plasticine and flatten out little pieces like this. With a ruler, press it down hard on top of the plasticine until you get a nice little flat portion. And when you've got three of those, pile them one on top of the other. I'll start with the dark grey one, place an orange one on top, press it into the grey, then I'll place my green one on top of that. Now they're not exactly the same size, that doesn't matter, because with my trusty kitchen knife I'm going to cut the messy edges off, like that and make a neat rectangle. Off go the long edges and off go the short edges at each end. Make up several of these rectangles and you have something that represents the crust of the earth because you probably know that when you look at some hills and rocks and cliffs, they look like this. Layers of rock, enormous thick layers of rock and they may even be bent or twisted. Well, how did they get that way? I'm glad you asked. This is where your little plasticine model comes in. You take one of these little rectangular slices and imagine that your fingers are the enormous forces in the Earth's crust. I'll place it down on the table like that and I'll imagine that these are forces over thousands or even millions of years pushing, 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 squeezing the layer. What's going to happen if my fingers get closer together? You can see what must happen to the layers. You must have part of it either pushing up or, I'll help it a little bit with my hands here, pushing down. When this happens in the Earth's crust, we call the upward pushed part an anticline and the little downward pushed part a syncline. And if you look around the hills nearby your home, you'll find anticlines and synclines, I'm sure. Now, they may not always stay that way because you may get other things happening on the Earth's crust as well. Because of the effects of weather, wind and rain and chemical action of things dissolved in that rain and rivers, you may find things like this happening. Parts of those hills may be worn away. Now, when this happens, what's going to happen to our little model? Suddenly, we find that the top layer is no longer just green, but it's uh, little lines of orange and grey showing through. They're all different. They represent different kinds of rocks. Of course, they're not such brightly coloured uh, slices, but they are there nonetheless. And if you fly over a hilly section, you may well see lines of rock stretching for miles and miles in the distance hard layers of rock that are jutting upwards and they've been weathered away to form that sort of formation. So that's one of the things that we notice around about us with the Earth's surface. But other things can happen as well. If you get forces pulling on some layers of rock, what's going to happen? Can you predict what will happen? I'll pull these, pull them, pull them, pull them, pull them. What must happen? You must get a break happening somewhere along the line. And in fact, if you get a break occurring at an angle like this one here, I've already helped it along a little bit with the knife, you can see what might happen. It might break and then slide down in that way. Or it might break and then push back together. So you get the wrong layers appearing to be next to each other. That's called a fault, and there are many different kinds of faults. Well, if you get that sort of thing happening and a crack opens up, that's called a fissure. And you can imagine the damage that this would cause if it happened to be running through a city. Enormous destruction could be caused because of the forces that are unleashed by these movements of the Earth's crust. And of course, when this happens, we have what we call an earthquake. Great damage, great destruction.